Today I'm going to share my starter website project folder structure. So usually I start with a client name and I hope for you that you will get more than one client, but that kind of makes sense. Now within that folder, I create a project name. Now you may be thinking, well, I just need to create one website. Why would I create another subfolder? And there's going to be quite a few subfolders and you're correct about that, but there's a good reason for it. Maybe you're creating the main website, but maybe in six months time, you need to create a one page website for an event for the same client or maybe you need to create a web app. So that's gonna make things tidy and organized. Okay, so let's start with the website folder. So as you can see here, within the website folder, I have an asset and a backups folder. So let's start with assets. So within assets, I have four folders. I have images, CSS, plugins, and scripts. And there's a underscore be, uh, for images, and that's because for the same reasons, I want images to be on top. I could have given numbers, but that's the way it is. That's the way I use it. Now, within images, I have another folder called unoptimized. And actually, some of the images I put in that folder have been optimized, but on a first level. And if you want to know what I'm talking about, I created a full video about how I optimize my images for the web. But basically, let's say that I optimize an image in Photoshop or Affinity Photo. That's going to be the first level. And all those images are going to go in that folder. And next, I'm going to drag and drop all those images here on tinypng.com, which is completely free. Uh, the only thing is that if you don't have the premium plan, you can only put up to 20 images per batch, but you can have as many batches as you wish. Or you may want to use a tool like Short Pixel, which is a premium tool. But whatever you use, that's the same principle. Now, once I've done that, I will put the optimized images and I will put it at the root of the images folder. And once again, knowing your organization is really going to help in the long run. Now, the next folder is CSS. And Okay, if you use WordPress and you use tools like Elementor or DV or maybe specific plugins, most of the time we just put the code straight in there. But it can be a good idea to really reference your code and comment your code and put it there so that, like I said, if later down the line, in six months, nine months, 12 months, you need to find what was that code again, where was it, at least you have a reference. Or if you need to hand over the project, it's going to be way easier. Now the next folder is plugins. I like to put especially the premium plugins within that folder. So it makes it easier when I need to do a maintenance. I know what I need to look for. And if you're just creating website coding from scratch, from time to time, you will use also some plugins or some scripts. Well, depending on if you use a content management system where you code a lot, but that still allows for plugins, I would put them here. Same thing for scripts. It could be JavaScript scripts. It could be PHP. It could be whatever script you want to use. But once again, having it here is going to be a good reference for the future. Now, if we go back one step, we have the backups folder. And then I have one, two, and three. So one is the dev folder. So what I usually do is I put the dates in reverse order. Now, depending on where you live, the months and the days might be inverted, but just do it the way you do it in your country. So here in my case, I have the year, then the month, then the day, and then I just put a keyword to know what it's about. So here it's prototype. Then we have the staging environment. And if you don't know what a staging environment is, well, basically when you create a website, you have the development environment, then you put the website in what we call production, which is folder number three. And so production is the live website that everybody can reach on the internet. Now, when you need to do a maintenance, the good practice is to actually clone the website on a staging environment, which is a web environment in the similar condition as the production website. I hope I make myself clear. Otherwise, just do a quick Google search, but I hope I was able to explain what it is. So just like for the dev folder, I would create a subfolder with the dates and a keyword. And then I do it for the production. And that helps me when I do a maintenance, if anything goes wrong, I still have the latest version. And once again, for future reference, then you would have several backups. Okay, so that's it for our website folder. Now the next folder is 01 documents. And within documents, we have quotes, invoices, contracts, and miscellaneous. Well, quotes, as it says, you're just gonna put all the quotes in here and then the invoices and i know most of the time we use software as a service services and it's all in the cloud but i like to have a second backup just in case same thing for the contracts and i've already talked about that in other videos but you should create contracts when you create websites 
and uh, I've actually created a video about it and I've put some resources where you can download a contract template. And the last one is 04 miscellaneous because depending on the project, you may have other documents like a non-disclosure agreement, for example. Okay, the next folder is 02 identity and we have three subfolders. So the first one is branding and usually when the client has a branding guide identity, I will put it in here. Now, if you don't know what a branding guide is, I strongly encourage you to download the template that I created for free from my website and you can get it from casino.com forward slash branding. Basically, the branding guide defines the whole brand of the client, but most of the time they don't have a brand defined. But maybe they do have a color palette or maybe they printed some flyers in the past and you can all put it in here. It's going to help you so much to create the website. Now, the second folder is logo, so you should aim to get the logos in the best possible quality and actually you should try to get them as vector logos. So Illustrator files, Affinity Designer files, and so on. Now, once again, most of the time I don't get these. So it's always trying to look for the designer who initially designed the website, but that's a story for another video. Okay, folder number three is the fonts. And once again, that's for future reference. Always ask the client for the fonts, especially premium fonts and ask for the licenses also. And when it comes to Google fonts, I also like to have a copy because sometimes some Google fonts change or disappear and it's always good to have the original one okay folder number three is resources and then we have four subfolders the first one is graphics and i have non-stock and stock basically non-stock most of the time is graphics that you created whether in photoshop illustrator uh, affinity designer and so on and now the stock folders usually is stuff that you get from a stock website like envato elements it could be um, I stock photo or get images and that kind of websites. It could also be something like uh, Pexels. Okay, the second folder is the photos. And once again, we have non stock, stock, and I've added screenshots. Non stock would be the pictures that you took yourself or someone took in your agency. Uh, and you have the rights on those photos. And that's very important. Second is the stock, as we've seen previously. And three is screenshots because when I don't get good quality material from the client sometimes what i do is that i take screenshots on a high density screen and then when i shrink it down it looks decent so you may find yourself using these also folder number three is the videos so once again non-stock and stock and folder number four is the audio and once again non-stock and stock okay folder number four is mockups now when i say mockups it could be the hero section on the home page it could be uh, a visual that you create in Photoshop for a specific part of the website. And usually that's where I create the mockups. And I also like to put numbers. So number zero one would be hero section. Number zero two would be content section and so on. I try to keep things organized because otherwise it becomes a mess. Now, number five is the content folder. And within that folder, we have a few subfolders. And that's always going to be different depending on the website that you're creating. So in this case, we have a website with the homepage, about us, our services, testimonials, contact, and legal. But if it was an e-commerce website, you could create catalog or shop and then put the various products. Now, if it's a shop with 500 products, that may be a different story, but hey, you still need to get the content. So basically, once I've got the whole structure, what I would do is I would add all those folders to Google Drive. So within Google Drive or Dropbox, I will create a folder with the client name, then the project name, and then just the content folder. And that's going to make it easier to get the content from the client. So usually ask the client if they have a Gmail address, and most of them do. And then I'm just going to share the whole project. Now, sometimes they're not using Google Drive. And in that case, I can use Dropbox. But honestly, 99% of the time, we use Google Drive. And then all I ask them to do is to add the content straight within those folders and it makes sense to them they have one folder per page all they need to do is to add a document for the text they need to add the pictures and i always make sure that they don't add the pictures within word documents usually i ask the clients if they can create text files just simple text files no pdfs text files that they drop in each folder and the images that they want to drop also in each folder per page that makes my work way easier and i hope it's going to make yours too now, I've created a zip file that you can download for free on my website and you should see the URL appearing on screen right now. I also put a link in the description below. 
And by the way, if you want to see a fun video showing you how I handle a project from start to finish, I created a web designer movie that you see appearing on screen right now. And this is the type of video I wish I had because I would have answered a lot of the questions I had.